Hi, my name is Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to revisit the new Brexit standards controls and think back to when the government insisted that it was fine to finally go ahead with them this year because the impact would be very small. I wondered at the time, and I'm doing so again, did they factor in their own incompetence to their calculations? So after years of delay, we have finally started carrying out standards checks on certain imports coming into Britain. Before the start of this month, there was no system for doing so at all. Even now, the system's not only quite weak, but falling down. Remember that there were full checks taking place on our exports from day one of the hard Brexit at the end of 2020. The EU has been applying checks in order to protect their own market. We have had years of wide open trade borders. And I'm sure it's pure coincidence that cases of food poisoning are reported to be extremely high these days. We need the standards checks, but the government kept putting them off because of the disruption it would cause. It would result in more shortages, it would drive prices up. And with the high inflation of the past couple of years, the government were in no mood for stoking it further. They gambled that nothing serious would happen, like importing African swine fever, for example, wiping out part of our farming sector. And they got away with it because that did not occur, apart from the increase in people being hospitalised with food poisoning. But that is barely being reported, so they've gotten away with that as well. The checks were delayed for a final time last year, but the government insisted the inflationary impact would be very low in 2024, now that inflation levels had come down a lot. So they've finally gone ahead. And this is still what they were saying even a couple of weeks ago. At the end of April, the government were asked a question by Stella Creasy, who's chair of the Labour movement for Europe. She was asking about the impact of the incoming checks. She noted that the government have only claimed that the inflation cause will be about 0.2% over three years, but the experts have suggested it will actually be 10 times worse than that. She challenged the government to publish their calculations so they could be checked independently. And the government response was basically, well, it was basically a masterclass in mansplaining from Mark Spencer, a junior minister at DEFRA. Oh, you wouldn't understand it, dearie, he basically said. Your math seems to be a bit crap, so there's no point in showing you our calculations. You just wouldn't understand them. So the government are insisting that the cost will only be about £300 million over three years. I say only. <laughs> That's still a cost that we didn't have before. But before I explore that further, I must just point out one other thing about the debate two weeks ago. So during it, a different Tory simpleton claimed that as part of the EU and single market, we could not impose checks to ensure that diseases such as the feared African swine fever did not come into the country. Wrong. As wrong as wrong can be, in fact. The single market absolutely checks for things like that. It is post-Brexit Britain, which is not. Even with these checks finally coming online after so many years, we're still not checking things properly. The EU are, and they always have, and they always will. You know, you look up articles on farmers' fears of African swine fever. They're British farmers. EU-based farmers know their market is taking steps to reduce the risk. And you know what? This Tory idiot, the MP for Scarborough, may not even be lying. You assume well, he's just making it up, bloody Brexiteers. No, he may genuinely believe that. It's been made really obvious over the past few years. A lot of Conservative MPs genuinely don't know the first thing about Brexit. They think, well, because these checks didn't happen at the border, they didn't happen at all. No, they did. And they did happen at the border. They happened at the EU single market border. The first place they hit port, which was very rarely Britain because we're right on the northern bit of the EU. They still took place. It's just that now they all have to take place at the border with Britain. They were conned as much as the public. And, and it's no wonder the Tories have dug themselves a very deep Brexit hole. They, they don't understand what's going on. They, they fell for their own Brexit lies. They're too lazy to find out what... what the facts of the matter really are. They just believe that any old tosh they read in the spectator. But anyway, back to this low inflationary effect, which the government are still insisting. I've said before, I often wonder if the reason why economic forecasts for Britain always seem to be a bit optimistic when the actual results come out is because maybe economists never factor in the notion of the government getting every decision wrong. They sort of assume, right, there's these headwinds coming and a sensible government would deal with them in these ways. So we'll assume that's what's going to happen. 
And then the government actually does the opposite and they go, oh, okay, well, that's knackered our forecast now, hasn't it? Because it's hard enough to model economic impacts at the best of times. Way harder if you cannot even assume that the government will manage a basic level of competence. You know, take what's happened since the checks have come online, for example. Right from the start, we were told of delays and lorries being waved through. Now we're being told that some are being held up for an additional 20 hours. Retailers have had to decline deliveries of perishable goods because they're just taking too long. They're not fresh anymore. Right from the start of the hard Brexit, fresh food has simply not been remaining fresh for very long. There's so many stories. You still get them now of people saying they've got this thing from Tesco. Day later, it's, all, it's gone. It's finished. It's been a noticeable problem for those of us who pay attention. I don't get fresh food on the online shopping. There's no point. It just packets and cans, things like that on the online shop, frozen stuff. And then I get the fresh stuff on a separate trip so I can select it myself. And that then I can stand half a chance of it actually being edible by the time I get it home. And this is caused by the journeys taking longer now. There are so many delays. It just physically takes longer to get that fresh produce to us. And, 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 and now we're having to source fresh food from further afield as well because we're bottom of the list for being supplied from the single market. And the reason for that is, say a Spanish tomato grower, they can supply anywhere in the single market really quickly and easily. Order comes in, send it off. But there's a load of paperwork to fill in to export to Britain. So they leave British orders until last. That sometimes means there's not enough for us. We are what is known as a customer of last resort. They deal with our orders after everyone else's because everyone else's are easy and ours are not. So the additional delays we're getting with the extra standards checks, which we're simply not able to manage efficiently, mean that the goods are going from just about fresh enough if you sell it really quickly to, yeah, by the time this is on the shelf, it's already gone. Which is why retailers are turning deliveries down and consider what that means. It means the goods are never on the shelves. Shortages. We already have shortages, of course. Fruit and veg sections are much more sparse than, than in other parts of Europe or even British shelves as they were before Brexit. Supermarkets have been redesigning their layouts to take account of the fact they can only sell a smaller range of goods now. If delays are supposed to take no more than four hours, and some can take 20, it makes you wonder if the government actually considered when making their calculations that things might go wrong. Because this mansplainer from DEFRA told Creasy that, oh, oh, you seem to have picked the highest available figures for potential costs. But if you're contingency planning, that's what you're supposed to do. You plan for the realistic worst case scenario. By implication, it sounds like the Tories picked the best case scenario figure to work from. That is not wise. It's not just that it's bad from a project management point of view. It means that the Tories may be deluding themselves about the inflationary impacts of their manky Brexit in election year. You know, when I see people who are experts in logistics shouting warnings about what's happening here and a government who say, no, nah, it's all fine, I, I don't have to take very long to decide who to believe. It's, it, it was one thing when I thought we might have a May election. I could see that. I could see the Tories launching these checks and then leaving the mess for Labour to clean up. But what the Tories could be doing here is setting off a chain of dominoes which could result in noticeable and therefore newsworthy food and medicine inflation and shortages as they head towards an election that, that come autumn they won't be able to put off any longer when the cost of living is the single most important issue for voters across the political spectrum and all because they lack the intellectual capacity to face up to facts it's just more comforting to go well let's pick the best case scenario and assume that'll happen because even the basics are not being catered for as logistics experts have pointed out, it's not enough to say you're going to carry out checks. You need the staff. You need the facilities to do it. And, as one person pointed out, if those facilities are not going to be 24-7, then if the lorry arrives, arrives after the short, you need somewhere for them to sleep. And we've only got one facility in the entire country that's 24-7, by the way, at Sevington. But we have other ports. We just did nothing to prepare at all. The Tories just stuck fingers in their ears, said it's all going to be fine, and then behaved as if their drug-induced fantasy world was real. So really, who believes that our new standards controls are not going to cause a noticeable impact on food and medicine supplies? Absolutely incredible that the government decided to delay all of these systems 
until a few months before the election. Enough time for people to see the problems, but not enough time to fix them because it doesn't sound to me like they've baked any contingency plans in to do that. Another win for the Tory strategy machine there. Honestly, if they're left with even a single seat, then the people of this country need to hang their heads in shame. If they actually manage to remain in second place after the election, we're basically doomed as a people. I mean, think about what this means. It means senior ministers have insisted on the most optimistic appraisal of the system, which means they haven't worked on any contingency plans for anything less than the best case scenario. That means when problems happen, which are never included in a best case scenario, they're going to flap about trying to work out what to do because they never bothered to think about it in advance. And that is exactly what we're seeing reported now. 20 hour waits just for one of the checks to say nothing of all the other Brexit related delays in our supply chains now. How is it possible to be this bad at project management? How? It's like, no wonder people in the south of England are having to boil their drinking water because it's full of shit. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe for further content and click the like button. You can also sign up for memberships if you'd like to support the channel further. Thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.